Hello friends and welcome back. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done one, done one of these so I thought I'd you know take out the old magazines I had them put away in storage in a storage unit with you know some of my other possessions. So I thought you know what let's drag some of these out and kind of revive this series for a while. All right, and then let's see how it goes. Back when I did these originally I had an infant daughter literally an infant and she was in her crib and I would try to speak softly so I didn't wake her up. And it, it was kind of like one of Bob Ross's happy accidents. It, it kind of had this uh, accidental ASMR effect, right, from me keeping my voice down so I didn't wake my little daughter. And it seemed to be, it seemed people like that. So I, I'm looking to you for your input, whether you want that kind of soft-spoken ASMR effect to continue or for me to speak now like I am now. Uh, in just a normal voice okay so again let me know now getting back to this here so what we have this is from May 2018 as I said I've kind of gone into the well and this is still when the magazine was under Glenda Bailey's stewardship she was editor-in-chief she departed she was there from 2001 to 2020 as the editor-in-chief and Samira Nasser is now the new editor-in-chief. She took over, I believe it was the month of July in, in 2020. So my point is, we're, this is this magazine was still under Glenda Bailey's stewardship. Okay, so on the cover here, if you'll notice, this should kind of bring back a memory. It should kind of harken back. And what, to me, this is a classic David Bailey shot it could be this look this is Gigi Hadid before her baby of course and uh, this would be mod this would be the mod scene from London and probably somewhere about 64 65 66 somewhere in that time period and again you can imagine this being Twiggy and David Bailey taking this photo or it could be Gene Shrimpton but again they're just they're pulling this mod look from London in the mid 60s and it's really a home run it works very well okay and this is also going to be a very long episode there are so many images in here worthy of covering so I'm probably gonna to have to break this into two parts okay so here again we have Gigi Hadid who was dominating these magazines she and her sister Bella they were really done and Kaya Gerber at the time I'm going back to the 2018 time frame those three models the two Hadids and Kaya Gerber were dominant in the industry so this is Gigi again and you can see here this dark plum this dark berry is not working for her this this does not do anything for Gigi she's got this smoky eye thing going on and this really goth, it's almost like a gothic type look and it's just not working compared to that here where she has a lighter lipstick on this is working and this just is not working okay on to the next on to the next photo now here we have the, so I'm a subscriber and I believe the way it works this is the actual de facto subscriber cover and this is what you would see on the newsstand. If you were to buy the issue at the newsstand, this is the cover you would receive at the newsstand. And again, so look at the difference. This is Gigi again, right? Because it's always the same model on the subscriber cover and the newsstand cover. But look how light her lipstick here and how that works. Again, the eyeshadow, light, and come back to this dark berry. And it's just not working, okay? So it just shows what... Uh, what makeup can do and here again we're channeling the mod 60s look from London right this would be really quintessential uh, London 1960s mod again you can you could almost see David Bailey behind the camera taking the shot and it's a wonderful image this is absolutely gorgeous beautiful image highest praise to whoever took it I don't know who did all right here hold on uh, Mariano Vivanco okay so he did a great job fashion editor was Joanna Hillman who dressed Gigi in this outfit and again right we're going with the mod that mod theme this is a gorgeous image here now, we are, the reason I love this is you know how today we're getting and I've been harping on this for a, for years now is this these veneers right where these veneers are so perfect and they, they look ridiculous right it looks like they were made in a NASA aerospace uh, manufacturing facility like in Cape Canaveral or something it's just they're just 
ridiculous looking. And you can see here her two, I think these are called incisors or whatever they are. The two, the two front teeth are longer than the other teeth and there's a little gap. But my point is I'm not criticizing the photo. I'm actually praising it because, right, the humanity, her humanity remains in this image. You don't find aerospace looking fake teeth in this image and it comes across as totally natural that's why I really don't get these people these celebrities and stuff who go for those veneers they look ridiculous okay here's Gigi again on yet another inset right and she's got that dark lipstick and it's just it's not working I don't, I just I don't get it she doesn't look good in dark lipstick so I don't know why they continue to put her in it okay this was it could have been okay Prada was one of the best advertisers for a long time with the quality of their photos. But here, this image is way overexposed. Okay, it's almost like a Terry Richardson effect where the photographer is about two-thirds to one stop hot on the exposure. Okay, that's about two-thirds stop of light to one full stop, and it's not working. And they removed the, the spectral highlights from the glasses of course the flash would be hitting these glasses and bouncing back into the lens of the camera so a photoshop technician went in here and blackened right darkened these glasses removed the glare or the right the, the lens or excuse me the the flash from the glasses and it just again it looks like somebody's trying to pay tribute in a way to terry richardson but it's just it's not working the photo's not working here we have a great this is just a shoe and a purse, but you can pull all the detail. You can even see the right the texture of the shoe. You can see it, the stitching, the sole, right? I mean, it's just a beautiful photo of a shoe. And honestly, I would actually, because I'm a big fan of the, the pop art movement that really grew in the 60s with Roy Lichtenstein and Warhol, and there were others, right? And this would this would fit in naturally with the with the pop movement of the '60s. This would be a standalone photo. I would actually frame this. I would have no problem taking an X-Acto knife, right, cutting the paper really well, straight, nice straight line, putting this in a frame and hanging it. I mean, it's that's worthy of hanging on a wall. Just a picture of a shoe. Okay, this is horrible. This is Jennifer Lawrence. Right, and this, so let's talk about this. Richard Avedon made this famous in the 50s. He actually included his grip equipment, lighting equipment in the in the shot. Okay, so this was really started by Avedon. Then you move forward, and then Annie Leibovitz copied Avedon. And she used this a lot. In, in some of her most famous photographs, you can see the equipment in the shot itself. And now it's still being perpetuated kind of got mixed feelings on it but you know it is what it is but I'm just saying the images the images are they're just that they're, they're flat there's no contrast and again I know I'm armchair quarterbacking but if I would have been the Photoshop technician I would have just touched that contrast slider a little bit because there's no contrast here this image is completely washed out and so is this one there's there's no contrast in these images Okay, this is Kaya Gerber for Saint Laurent. And this is one thing I really don't like. And again, maybe I'm being nitpicky, I don't know. But hip huggers, I'll tell you, and this is in all sincerity, there's only one person in history that's ever pulled off the hip hugger. And that was Robert Plant, the lead singer of Led Zeppelin in the late 60s and early 70s. He, I mean, talking even with women. One person, Robert Plant, is the only one that ever pulled off hip huggers. It's a, look at this. This is a ghastly, horrible look. The ideal is a high-waisted jean, right? For a woman, the jean comes up to the natural waistline, right, and accentuates the hips and the natural waist. These are atrocious, and I don't see how. I really don't see how women wear those. It's beyond me. Okay, this is Maybelline, and you can see the image on the left. It's grossly overprocessed, and to me, that really looks like a Portrait Pro uh, uh, job, right? Because if you ever had Portrait Pro, if you ever used it, they have like a one click. You literally click one button, and it does a multitude of things to take 
an image that's kind of flat or say if you had a model who didn't wear any makeup to the shoot or whatever I mean Portrait Pro can fix a lot of things with literally just one click or you can go through and do everything individually mouth eyes nose you can do all kinds of crazy stuff in Portrait Pro but my point here is this is what the one click fix in Portrait Pro looks like if, if you're in a hurry and you don't you really don't want to invest the time you do a one click and this is what Portrait Pro would spit out and you can see it's grossly over processed and that's one of the downfalls of Portrait Pro that one click it'll give you a very over processed image okay I'm gonna leave this one in here because I want to show you an, a, a, the difference between this shot so this this shot could really work you have this really bright and lively dress here it's red, like in the spit. It's almost like uh, Finding Nemo. You've got these whatever kind of fish that was. Now look how bright and lively this is. And she's wearing brown frames, her eyeglasses, and the frames don't match the dress. There's hardly, I can almost, except for these little stripes here, brown, there's hardly any brown in the dress. And this dress is so lively and pops that the frame should have been the same color. The frame should have been a red or like a real bright yellow, right? You could see you could see any type of lively color popping and there would be agreement between the frames and the dress, but here there's all kinds of disagreement. So that the, the fashion editor who put this ensemble together really failed in this shot. But I wanna, I'm gonna refer back to this later and you'll see why. Okay, this is a great shot here too. So this model had to get all right uh, the lotion. So you have the specular highlights. So you can see it here in the finger, here in her foot, on the knee, coming down the shoulder, down the shin bone, right? So even on her forehead and her chin. So she's too wet. Now you would never be this, a woman would never be really this wet to dress because her clothes would stick to her. You, you wouldn't want to be that wet. But they have to do it here on the model. They have to oversaturate her with this lotion in order to get the light, right, to come back into the lens of the camera. So she has to be excessively wet to pull off this shot. But look at that. I mean, it's a marvelous, marvelous photo. It's beautiful. Okay, going on. Celine, for years, was among the worst advertisers in these magazines. And you can see why. I mean, this is just a dreadful photograph. Absolutely dreadful. No, hardly any makeup on the model. No attention has been given to her hair. The photograph is just flat. I mean, it's really just a dreadful photo. Dreadful. Okay, here. This is okay. But the, the problem I have with this image, look how, okay, so this is really kind of blown out, okay? This is a little bit overexposed, but look at how underexposed her face is. So what I would have done here is the Photoshop technician. I could have left everything pretty much the same, but there's a shadow slider, right? I would have just pulled the shadow slider right to, to lift, get some more, right? Get some more exposure on the face, or there's an S-curve. If you, if you open a photo, the curve will be like this on a diagonal and you just tweak right you can tweak your curve and you just watch the watch the image change as you tweak the curve so I would have either done it in the S curve or I would have done it just with the shadow slider just to get a little get a little more light on her face okay this is cool here I love this this almost looks like a Jackson Pollock right it's kind of a in a, a light kind of a light homage to Pollock but look at how wet these paints still are. You can see the specular highlights here and the light bouncing off the paint. And it just looks wonderful. Look at that. That is a really, really tremendous photo. Okay, here, we just I wanted to include this for macro. I don't know if you shoot macro, if you have a macro. That's one of the things about the iPhone 13 Pro, the new one, is you can really pull off some incredible macro photography just with a smartphone now you could probably you could probably get the same image with an iphone 13 pro that's how good smartphone photography has become and i like this this is kind of royal almost looks like a crown right with the it's beautiful it really harkens back to the the uh i was fortunate to go to the tower of london in 05 and i went to the jewel house right and all the jewels on are on display at the tower and it's really really looks like that 
Okay, Selena Gomez, she did a series of these ads for Coach. It was called Coach New York. And she did a multitude of different layouts, different looks. And it all was the same thing. She would be in a different type of dress or pajamas or a nightgown. And it always showed a shot of New York in the distance. And it always had, the, obviously, the coach bag. So this was a variation on the theme of that series of photos that ran during this time period. And it just works. Again, though, she's a little underexposed here. If I would have been the Photoshop tech, I would have just slid the, the shadows, just drag it right a little bit, lift those shadows, and expose her a little bit more because her face is a little underexposed. I mean, the whole thing is just a little bit too underexposed to me, of course. Right, you're, you're free to disagree. This is really cool. This is Emily Ratajkowski, and this is really a really nice shoot. A little daring here showing some leg. And here, this is kind of daring. But the, what the kill to shoot, again, I get back to a fashion editor, is that she would have been much... Now, these, these motorcycle boots do not go with this with this kind of like sundress, right? And I, always, I will tell you, if you do this as a hobbyist, always have a pair of cork wedges right if you want if one pair is black black will go with anything but it's a it's a woman's wedge shoe and it's made of cork right and it makes always it always goes with a sundress there's no shoe that's better if you have like i say if you're on a tight budget and you can only have one pair of shoes just go with a black strapped cork wedge and that would have made all the di this is stupid this is ridiculous motorcycle boots and a sundress the fashion editor should have been Oh, I don't even know. I don't want to go there. I don't want to get negative. This is another horrible photo from Fendi. And Fendi, what's crazy is this is one of the best advertisers in the business. And their photos are usually top shelf, right? But look at that. That's a wreck. The woman is hardly made up. Look at her hair. It's just like there was no... Now, I will give the fashion editor a little credit here because look at the, the chocolate nails. They match perfectly with this, Okay. There's, there's agreement between the nails and the wardrobe. But the makeup, I look at the makeup and hair. It's just, it's just horrible. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this to 30 minutes maximum. And then if I, I'll cut it at 30, then I'll make a part two. This is beautiful here. It kind of looks like a peacock. That was the intent. Almost like when a peacock displays its feathers. You have all this. And it's radial. Like it's, right? It's, look at the colors. That is a beautiful, beautiful shot. Oh my goodness. Okay, here this is horrible. I like the paisley, but this is a sleeve. It's actually a, a sleeve on a garment. But look at that. That's, a, that's horrible. Again, some of these fashion people, they're just out there, man. They're just way out in left field, right? Okay, here... Like, you know, when a woman says she's having a bad hair day, what that generally means is bad hair days occur on a humid day in the summer. So what it is, a woman mousses her hair up or uses hairspray or something to get volume, to get this voluminous hair, right? And then on a humid day, this is what happens to a woman. The, the, she loses the volume because of the humidity, and, and the hair collapses flat onto a woman's head. Hence, I'm having a bad hair day. So I can't believe Jimmy Choo right they would put this in a magazine because that is the quintessential bad hair day so you're going to run this in a national fashion magazine that's just ridiculous there okay this is a spectacular photo i really wanted to cover this one in depth okay because let me get this glare off here so i want you to really see what the fashion editor and the photographer the links they went to to make this a championship champion photo Okay, so, so here in the background you have a black muslin cloth, okay, and it's probably somewhere between 6 to 10 feet behind this model, okay, and there's uprights. There's two uprights out of frame, and there's a crossbar, and this black muslin cloth is being clamped, like you have a clamp, it's being clamped to a pipe as part of the structure out of frame, okay, so this is a piece of cloth hanging from a... Uh, backdrop holder now the light the light has to come in and using the inverse square law right the photographer does not want the light to hit the muslin you don't want light hitting the muslin 
and illuminating it so that you can see the fabric okay so this is why this is a really tricky shot to set up but it's very professionally done because the photographer got the light in where he or she wanted it hit the photo I hit the model but yet the light did not spill onto the cloth and that's really it's you know it takes a lot of tweaking so look at the agreement here in this dress like this emerald you have this theme of emerald consistent throughout the throughout the shot you have all this emerald and then the emerald dress and then you have this neutral it almost looks like a wolf a wolf's hide and that's acting as a neutral gray this this kind of grayish is a neutral and so it you know it's agreeing with the emerald and you have this black backdrop and you have a little bit of this right Jessica rabbit thing going on with the hair you know covering one eye and it's just beautiful I mean that took believe it or not that took a heck of a long time to set this shot up right and look at that how professionally and beautifully done that photo is it's magnificent okay here this is horrible so right looks at first glance you would think this is Gigi again you would think it's shot through a gel so a gel is a piece of plastic and it's colored and you put it in front of the light so as when when the light passes through the gel it picks up the color of that gel so here it looks like they're using a pink gel of course it's out of frame in front of the light the light fires the strobe fires passes through the pink so you get this pink hue now the problem here is that this now you have an orange right you have an orange coming across the shadow or shoulder rather and then down below it's pink so you have this two-tone now if you're shooting through the gel you're really not going to get a two-tone effect like that so what leads me to believe is this was done using uh, layers in Photoshop so they the, the, the a post processor Photoshop technician created a layer right and so you have this pink going on and then you have this other orange going and it just doesn't work if, if they would have just used the straight gel no Photoshop just boom right hit hit Gigi with with the gel and it's all consistent one color whether it's pink or this orange and I'll tell you a one that did it if you go back a few years ago Miley Cyrus did uh, well, I just lost my power there for a second it's storming here and it just took my power out for a second but anyways if you look at Miley Cyrus for Maybelline they shot Miley through a gel through a pink gel and it made her skin appear flushed like like she was flushed with like almost if you take a niacin tablet your skin will flush and you'll turn up like a pinkish hue because your blood just it just starts flowing so fast and it kind of goes to your skin and your actual skin takes on this pink appearance if you right if this niacin effect and this is what Miley did it's, it was she was shot through a pink gel and it looked magnificent they did a great job with that shoot Miley and Maybelline but that this here this is horrible it doesn't work what time are we working on 23 okay I'm gonna go seven more minutes okay here we have Chloe and this could have been a that could have been a great shot that is really a wonderful shot but again we talked about this before years ago when they put this font they obscure the image they it's an obstruction right this would have been much better served if it was a little it's much smaller and drag it down here just right here and reduce the size of this bottle we get it we, we can still see the bottle but maybe make it you know much smaller scale smaller scale bring it down and so then you know the image is not molested and here this image is absolutely ruined by this oversized bottle and this oversized font yeah this is cool this is really a cool image and it caught me off guard because that's contemporary that's a contemporary image but if you look at her the way she's made up and her hair man that's got like 1976 1977 78 I would guess if I had to guess I would say this image was taken in one of those three years 76 77 it just has that time period all over it but yet it's a modern image and you see how what how photographs can bring back memories or or seem to be taken in a certain time period this is a wonderful shot instantly takes you back to that time this is really a gorgeous shot let me see who I think this was another oh this is Kenneth Willard now Kenneth Willard's claim to fame is macro shots 
on the eyes and on the mouth. Uh, that's, that's normally the kind of sh uh, shoot he does. It's macro on the eye, macro on the mouth. But look at this image. You can actually, it's so cool, you can see the little peach fuzz on her chin and her neckline, right, right here. But it's not masculine anyway. Everybody has a little bit of peach fuzz. If, if the light hits your face just right, you can see that little peach fuzz. But it's beautiful. This is an absolutely gorgeous shot. Even though it's kind of underexposed here, you can understand the purpose here was to make it a rim shot, right? So Willard is using the light to just, right, is a rim. That's a color rim. And look at that. It's just, that's just an absolutely beautiful shot. I just wish there wasn't this text on it. This would have been more, right, if it would have been a standalone image in this magazine. This is another one. You take an exacto. You put that in a frame and hang it on your wall. It's really that good. Okay, here, it's kind of, they attempted the same thing, but this image is really over-processed. There's just way too much Photoshop going on in here, and they've ruined it. You can see the heavy Photoshopping of the teeth, the lips. Okay, they've reduced the opacity of the eye. That's actually, that's not taken, right? Because if this was a real shot, the photographer would be in the lens of the glasses, right? The camera and the photographer, it would be reflected back into the, So what they've done is, again, they've created layers here, and they've put this in digitally with her eye, and they've just reduced the opacity. I don't know, 10 or 5% opacity on the eyes, right? But this is all. This entire thing is one big Photoshop monstrosity, and it, it's not working. Okay, this is a beautiful image here. Look how wet that lipstick is. Man, does that work? That is just a... And I want you to see the definition. If you can pull the definition out. Like, look how precise the application of lips, this lipstick is. I mean, it's just super precise. And this is... I guarantee you, this model probably sat in the chair. I would probably... Oh, man. Hours, right? It took hours to make her up for this shot. The nails, the lipstick the eyebrows, everything. So I would say, again, you know, not that I'm a master at makeup, you know, I hardly know anything about it, but my point is I guarantee you she probably sat in the chair three hours to get this, that level of precision. And that's what I mean by dedication when photographers and, and you know, the whole crew, you know, the lighting personnel, right, makeup people, hair. And this is what happens when the synergy, the synergy that's created from a team collaborating and producing a masterpiece. Like, and that really is a masterpiece. That's a that's a Hall of Fame shot right there. Okay, this was, if you ever heard the term S-O-O-C, like you can pronounce it souk, what that means is straight out of camera. So what that means is there's no, literally almost no processing whatsoever. The image is literally straight out of the camera. And this is Camila Cabello, the singer, but it's look how flat this image is. There has been like zero, they actually like, this looks like a JPEG and they popped the memory card out of the camera and, and published it. I mean, look at that. There's no processing whatsoever and it's just a completely flat, lifeless image. I mean, if you're gonna shoot at a pro level, you, you gotta do some processing on your, you know, even if you're, you're shooting in raw, of course, right? You take that raw image and you tweak it, you, 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 you play with that image until you get it perfect and this looks like it wasn't shot in raw again it was shot in jpeg popped the memory card out and right there you go not making any sense okay this is again kenneth willard i think this is kenneth willard's work but this is what kenneth willard is known there's three for there are three photographers in existence today that are known for this type of macro work again it's this type of right uh the, the macro, something to do with the mouth and teeth, or there'd be the eyes. And there, are, Kenneth Willer is one. See, and I've been out of the game for a couple of years, and I've forgotten who the other two are off the top of my head. But again, there are three people who specialize in this. And I'm not seeing the photographer's name here, but it's one of those three. And over here, I saved this image for Raquel Welch. Look at Raquel. I think she's in her 80s now. And look at her in her 80s. Oh my God, it's unbelievable. Okay, I think I'm gonna cut it here. I'm at 30 minutes now, and I'm gonna continue on, and we'll turn the rest of the magazine into a, did you hear that thunder? Wow, it's really coming over. Okay, so I'll turn this into a part two. Thank you so much.